welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today is Friday, so happy Friday. Hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, for me, last week was a lot of work. I redid everything in the cottage, moved a lot of stuff around, rebuilt displays, got my Christmas up, uh, and cleaned everything. And so it was just a pretty exhausting week. It was really nice uh, to actually get back into my kitchen this week and do some projects for you. So for today's video, I have a thrift flip and I completed four projects for today's video. I can't wait to share them with you. I hope you like them. And without further ado, here they are. This project is a super simple one. I took these two little stocking holders that I had. They were pretty scuffed and a little faded when I got them. And I just gave them a good spray coat of Rust-Oleum 2X in matte black. I did wait till they were fully cured and go over them with a matte clear coat, which I forgot to record. And then they were finished and I love how they came out. For project two, I had these two little gold snowmen that I bought just recently on one of my junk runs. And as much as I do enjoy the gold, they were a little bit faded and just didn't look great. So I decided to go ahead and paint them. So my original plan was to actually distress them back to this brown color. So I took them outside and gave them one good even coat of the Rust-Oleum 2X. I believe the color is called Espresso. Uh, and then brought them back inside. And once they were dry, I began to paint them. And for that, I am using DIY's Crinoline, which is this beautiful creamy white color that I just absolutely love. And so I went in and gave these guys two good even coats of crinoline and then I did have to go over in a few places just to cover up a few dark spots that had shown through the paint before I was ready to move on to the next step. Now again I wanted to in my head I thought distress these and so I was going to just go ahead and distress the uh, snowflakes and their little faces so that you could really see some of the detail in these pieces and so that's what I started off doing. So I grabbed my damp shop towel and I started distressing this guy and just worked, you know, to take off some of that paint with that water. And when I got done, I realized I really wasn't too keen on it. So on the second one, I decided to go a little different route. And for this one, I broke out my clear wax and I started by giving it a nice, good, even coat of the clear wax. And then once that was done and I'd wiped off the excess with my shop towel, I went back in with some dark wax. And my thought process here was that rather than distressing out the detail, I would highlight the detail by filling it in with that dark wax. And then when I wiped back the excess, you could really see the detail in that snowflake. And honestly, I liked this effect a lot better. And so I finished this little snowman uh, just again going over the entire piece with the clear wax first wiping back the excess and then going over it with a nice coat of the dark wax this time I did not uh, thin it out with mineral spirits I just went straight over I wanted to give it a little bit of a darker uh, feel and then I went around just underneath his little head and right underneath his hat with a little bit more of the dark wax just to kind of sh give those a little bit nice shadow effect and honestly I went back and redid the other snowman mm -hmm. 
project three is a pretty simple makeover. I realized as I was doing my projects, I started with the snowman, moved on to the tray that you're going to see here in a minute, used crinoline on both of those pieces, and realized I needed something with a little bit of color. So I went ahead and went with aviary. I did take this out first and give it a good coat of Rust-Oleum 2X in just matte black, uh, just so that I'd have a nice even paint to go back to when I distressed. And then I went over it with two good even coats of DIY's aviary, which is this beautiful green. Then once that was done and both coats of paint were completely dry, I went in with my damp shop towel and gave it a really good distressing. So I'm just going over all of the detail and just giving it a little bit of an aged appearance, bringing back a little bit of that black paint through the green, uh, and just kind of highlighting the details in this piece. Once that was done and I was happy with how it looked, I went in with my DIY clear wax and sealed that paint. Now, as I've said in previous videos, DIY paint is porous and can be reactivated with water. So you always want to make sure and seal it. There's plenty of great sealers out there, but I absolutely love the look of wax on a finished piece just because it gives it a nice soft kind of matte look to the paint. So once I was done with that and I had all of my clear wax applied and wiped back the excess, I did go over it with a nice good even coat of DIY's dark wax. Same routine here, just waxing or brushing that wax on and then going back in with a shop towel and wiping back the excess. I absolutely love the effect of this dark wax over the aviary paint, especially with the distressing and some of that black shining through. I really think this piece turned out beautifully. Project four is this really beautiful wooden tray that I found not too terribly long ago. I actually think my husband was the one who found this uh, and I knew almost immediately what I wanted to do with it. It's actually been sitting in my kitchen with the decoupage paper I wanted to use for probably a good couple of weeks now. So anyway, I started by giving this thing three good even coats of DIY's crinoline and the reason I went over it three times was just because this was so dark and a little bit slick that it was hard to get the paint to really stick in a couple of the corners and so I just wanted to make sure it had very very good coverage. And I did use my Mr. Bottle with a little bit of water just on the bottom to help move that paint and make it so that the brush stroke marks weren't quite as apparent. I knew, again, I wanted to use decoupage paper on the bottom of the tray, and I didn't want any uh, texture or anything like that showing through that paper. Once I was done with the three coats of paint and it was completely dry, it was time to move on to distressing. For this piece, I did want some good distressing. I wanted to show back through some of that beautiful brown color of the wood underneath. So I went over it pretty well with a damp shop towel, just rubbing everywhere that I wanted that brown to show through. Now, again, if you do not like the distressed look, you can absolutely skip that step altogether. Once I was done and I was happy with how my piece looked, I moved on to sealing my paint. And for this, I am going over the entire piece with a coat of DIY's Big Top. And the reason I'm including the bottom of the tray was that I really wanted to seal that paint before I laid down my decoupage paper. I knew I was going to be using a redesign decoupage fiber paper which tends to be a little thicker than actual paper more like fabric honestly and I tend to work the uh 
liquid patina a lot when I'm putting this paper down and the liquid patina also has the ability to reactivate your paint. So in order to avoid reactivating the paint and having that leach into this beautiful paper, I went ahead and sealed the whole thing with Big Top. Anyway, once the big top was nice and dry, I measured and cut out my piece of decoupage paper for the bottom of this. Once my piece was cut out, it was time to start the decoupage process. So I started on one end and gave myself a strip of the liquid patina on the piece, making sure that it was a nice, even level coat of the liquid patina, but that there was plenty of liquid patina down just because again, this fiber paper is definitely thicker and a lot more like fabric and really requires a good coat of the liquid patina to adhere. So I just worked my way across adding more liquid patina in a strip on the tray and then rubbing that uh, decoupage paper down with my hands and the brush and just kind of working that down into that liquid patina and then going over it with another coat of the liquid patina as I go. So just working in like three or four inch strips on this, taking my time, making darn sure that everything is stuck down into that medium so that I don't have any bubbles or wrinkles at all. And then just uh, finishing that up on the corner there, carefully adding that last little bit of the liquid patina down and then slowly putting my paper down and then just pushing that paper down into that liquid patina with my hands and the brush. I did go over it again with that second coat of liquid patina and then just use my fingers to kind of go around the edge and make sure that everything was laid down very, very well. The last thing I wanted was for any of this paper to peel back off of this piece. Once I was finished putting the top coat over the decoupage paper, this piece is finished and I absolutely love how it came out. projects for today. I hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel uh, and then you can just hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything and also drop me a comment below and let me know which of the projects in today's video your favorite was. For me definitely hands down the tray. Absolutely love how that came out. I uh, also wanted to let you know that I have uploaded all of my products that I have here in the cottage as far as paint and supplies onto my website. So if you go to www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com and then hit the little shop online, you'll go to my shop and you'll see that I have not only DIY paint and products, I have the Sweet Pickens paint and products, also what stock I have of redesign and my recycled decoupage papers on there. I am planning on ordering again from Redesign with Prima. I have still a few of the molds here in the cottage that are completely out of stock everywhere else. So if you're looking for one, check out my shop. I might just have it. Uh, and I am looking forward to getting some more product in and boosting up that inventory as I go. So. I really appreciate your orders. I, um, I absolutely love filling orders. It's one of my favorite things to do. So if you're in need of anything, please don't hesitate to get it from my website. Anyway, uh, enough of that for Friday, or gosh darn it, today's Friday, for Tuesday. For Tuesday, we are going to do another thrift flip. I don't think my husband and I are going out on a junk run on Sunday. 
simply for the fact that I already have so much stuff sitting around in my kitchen that it's really honestly difficult at this point to even get around in there. So I am going to stay home and just work on some projects at home. I need to get started on my Christmas cards. So that's probably what I'll be working on. Uh, but I hope you'll join me for Tuesday's video and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for being here. I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.